My name is Marlon Holmes. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, originally Buffalo, New York. I'm a master's and PhD student in mechanical engineering, and I'm a scientist. What got me into science? Actually, that was Power Rangers, believe it or not. And I used to always be frustrated because the villains, who honestly were pretty cheesy, um, would always win because they could fly. And so my first thought was, how could we make these Power Rangers fly? And so I started sketching ideas about jetpacks and aircraft, and then I started reading encyclopedias, because I was a dork, about how do you make aircrafts and jet engines work. And that kind of just led into a passion for curiosity and how to do things that haven't been done before. Science has really made me more aware of the possibilities in the world, right? I mean, if you think of you know, what makes the internet work, that's science, what makes artificial heart work, what makes cars fast, I mean, that's all science. And so being a scientist has kind of given me another window into the world and how we make the things that we take for granted almost every day operate. I don't know, I think if you think about it, I think the original scientist is always viewed as pretty much, you know, stereotypical white male in a lab coat with a beaker or something like that. I don't ever use beakers. I use lasers. That's cool. I have like a really big wind tunnel that's really loud. That's pretty awesome. And you realize that over time, science is really diverse. I mean, everybody's not the same. I think that's what makes it interesting. One of the experiences where my identity was challenged as a scientist involved an incident in Georgia Tech. I went there before I came here, studying aerospace engineering, and we were talking about um, what, how people got here. And I remember this guy just being like, you know, the only reason you're here is for affirmative action. You're really not good enough. Like, you just aren't. And nothing you can tell me will make me believe that you're good enough. And that was kind of hurtful. Didn't matter, I had a full scholarship that I came there, but basically it was like, no, you just got here because someone gave you a spot and you were not good enough. It was frustrating. You know, uh, you realize now people, some people are just ignorant and do what they want, but so I always felt like I was competing, even if there was nobody to compete against, that I had to be the best, that I had to be the greatest. I couldn't make mistakes. If I made mistakes, that proves him right that I didn't deserve to be here. I don't know, it, it wears on you. I love being the underdog, proving that guy wrong. That is ultimately what it is, is that doing well, you know, because at a certain point when you do so well, people just have to accept that you're good enough. In fact, not only are you good enough, you're probably better than a lot of people. But also I think the other part is the motivation is that by me doing what I'm doing, I'm able to empower and mentor other individuals, men, women, otherwise, to come up and do what they're doing. And I really think mentorship is important. Um, I think it's important to take the lessons and the opportunities that you've had and basically share those with the world. The best thing is just keep having these conversations. I think we have to keep sharing these stories. Uh, I think by no means am I the secular or the soul story that matters. I think we have to go into this open minds, open dialogue. Um, I don't think everything that happens to individuals like me or other people is malicious. I think in actually most cases, we're just not paying attention to it. And I think that through sharing these stories and having these dialogues and learning about each other and empathizing and realizing that we all walk our own path in our own set of shoes, that we can learn to be more supportive as a community and move forward.